Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today I'm going to be discussing a option through Amazon for flip up iron sights for an AR or other rifle. Let's get started. These were recently on sale for $30 each. The Votatu, uh, I'm Italian so that's probably not racist, version 2 fiber optic flip up iron sights rapid. How about that? Um, can't say that they're on sale anymore, but this is the box they came in, uh, rather minimal list, which honestly I appreciated no big, uh, advertising or branding on them, probably because they're a cheap third party knockoff, but they seem to be of decent quality. So go ahead and open it up. Very, um, minimalist packaging. As I said, they didn't even provide you any kind of, uh, padding or anything inside there, but they did give you an Allen key to mount them. And then you have the iron sights themselves. So we have our handy dandy science meter. These are going to be about 46 grams for your front sight. 50 grams for your rear combined, call it 100 grams of added weight. And that is because these backup, oh, uh, let's do ounces for those of us who have landed on the moon. You have 1.7 ounces front, 1.8 ounces rear with a combined 3.4, 3.5 ounces. So. These are a little stout because they are actually iron, iron sights. Um, go ahead and put uh, squared up with that and squared up with that. So you're going to have about one and a quarter inch width by two and a quarter inch long. And I say long, uh, flat, I suppose, because these are folded currently. And then you're looking at... Uh, about three quarters of an inch height when folded. Um, so these are going to be hefty boys because as uh, the name would imply, backup iron sights are made of iron. They're made of metal and these are no different. Um, to quantify that, where did I put you? Oh, I prepared for this. Hmm, okay, well, we're gonna do plan B. Plan B is a magnet. So this is magnetic. It will magnetize onto the things. And if we check it, it is ferrous. And mm, I will say it's quite a bit stronger on the added hardware, the bolts and all um, but the uh, standard material the body material does seem to have some magnetism to it so uh, a higher quality pot metal i suppose but metal nonetheless i know uh, magpul has some backup iron sights the more common ones are actually made out of polymer so iron sight is um bit of a misnomer there but open sights i suppose would be the better way to say that but what i'm hoping to do is with a new 11 and a half inch ar upper that i just got in today she's beautiful but she um is lacking vision so this is um, a Palmetto State Armory, 11 and a half inch AR upper in caliber 5.56 or 223. Uh, it is ready to go. It's optics ready, but I'm gonna go ahead and dress her up with iron sights, which is why I purchased these. So the concept between or behind iron sights is you're gonna have your front post and you're gonna have your rear post 
and with the AR sights, they're usually a peep sight like this, but you're gonna line up those three dots. And in the middle is gonna be your target. So bear with me. I'm trying to look through a camera as I do this. So you will have your sights lined up with your target. The orange dot will be on your target. The two green rear dots will be horizontal to the direct left and right of your orange dot. And then you will line all that up with your target and you'll slowly apply pressure on the trigger to punch a hole in your target that wasn't there moments ago. All that to say, one of the big selling points with these sights is the fact that these sights are fiber optic. Um, it's not showing up so well on camera because naturally, I believe you have a dimmer setting, do you not? You do. So if I shine here, uh, let's do that. Okay. So you have your large peep sight, which even right now you can see through the peep sight, but you're also seeing the two dots on the side lighting up. So you can see right there and you can see, right. I don't want to blind, there we go. So you can see that dot is lighting up pretty well. These are fiber optic embedded front and rear sights. So any ambient light that you have, even if I light up the target behind it, I am hoping that's coming out a little better on your end. Believe me when I say that the uh, sights on these have a built-in fiber optic element in them. So we have an embedded red polymer rod here and you can see it uh, nicely now that I did all that light show. Up against this black contrast, you can see the red prominently. Can I mess that up now that it is working? So you can see that red is a little more defined. Right now it's dim. Right now it's a little more defined. It's dim, defined, and blind. And then your greens as well. So you have iron sights when the vision or the uh, lighting is less than ideal and then any kind of daylight you have or flashlight you have there we go that looks much better so right now the left one is lit and the right one is not as i angle the flashlight a little bit more i'll get both of them glowing off glowing so fiber optics embedded which is uh, a great way to draw in the human eye and um, a great way to know which one is your front and your rear. And what I really like about these is the fact that for the last several years now, I have been painting my sights orange to the front and green to the rear. So these are already built the way that I have been painting the sights on literally all my guns in the same configuration, orange or red to the front with green to the rear. So transitioning from a handgun to a revolver, to a shotgun, to a rifle for me and for you, if you follow my advice, you'll have a consistent sight picture and sight color coordination with the added benefit of really drawing in the human eye because you have a very dynamic optic system by having the fiber optics built in. So again, we do have the tool included with that. Um, you'll notice on the side is a button and let me go ahead and roll back in the upper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place these, um, am I gonna be able to get the whole I am. You're going to place these on the upper and ideally you would want them the furthest distance apart that you can get them. So on the absolute furthest notch in this rail to the absolute furthest notch in this rail. The idea behind that is you're going to get a much better mechanical accuracy by having a further distance between your sights. So 
Um, I guess the idea would be, uh, how would I, how would I make that um, understandable? Uh, the science behind it, I suppose, would be that the longer the barrel is, if you're looking at the absolute furthest point here and the furthest point there, the slightest, let's say you're moving a quarter inch. A quarter inch on something this long is only going to wobble this much versus a quarter inch on something this long is going to wobble substantially more of an angle, right? And that more of an angle is going to correlate to a larger grouping on your target. Because by moving the barrel a half inch, you're going to be opening up your uh, shots on plate. So you purchased this much rail, you might as well use it. And that's going to help you, uh, another benefit, it's going to help you differentiate between which one is further away from you which one is further away from you, right? So I can tell that my left hand is further away from the camera than here. Honestly, it's it's more difficult, right? You're only talking about a half inch difference between them versus a 14 inch difference between them. So it all comes into um, getting the most out of the package that you purchased. So with all that said, when these are mounted here and here, they're gonna sit relatively flush on your upper. Again, um, they should be three quarters of an inch proud, so three quarters of an inch taller than the rest of your receiver. Uh, and then what you'll do is, let's do this, get you out of here for now. On the sides, are a rather proud, rather pronounced button. When that's mounted to the rifle, you'll push that button in and, ooh, I'm gonna tell you, that actually takes quite a bit of effort, which is what you're gonna want. This is just free floating in my hand and I'm trying to use the opposing force, uh, opposable thumb, opposing force of my thumb pushing in with my fingers pushing back and I'm trying to activate that spring. When you have it on a much larger upper, that's actually gonna be quite a bit easier to push. So that's ideal because part of their design is to be snag free. This is less likely to snag on clothing, slings, uh, tree branches, the dirt if you're crawling, barriers, barricades, all that crap and then they'll pop up when called upon. So the fact that you have to make a intentional motion with, um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not calibrated and I don't have a trigger pull uh, scale, but ooh, I, I 12, 15 pounds of pressure. I mean, honestly, these will not pop up unless they're told to do so. And I say that I've only tested the front one so far. That one too. And I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of shaking in my fingers as I'm pushing that in. So that is a very positive mechanism there. And you can hear when it opens, snap. Uh, that is a very strong spring mechanism. And what I'm noticing when I push that in, these will not fold either. So it looks like they are locked in position. Would it be? So there are cuts here and here at a couple of 90 degree indexes that will prevent this from opening until you tell it to. And they were smart enough to put notches in it where I cannot get that to accidentally collapse on itself without pushing in the same spring loaded detent and manually lowering it. So honestly, that's, um, that's some pre pretty decent engineering. I feel that's, uh, it only does what you tell it to only when you tell it to do it. That's, that's nice. The 
backup iron sights I have from Magpul, again, the plastic ones, they are uh, snap up and then just a little bit of tension, they'll lower themselves down. So quick, uh, quick deployment and um, simple enough to snap down, I suppose. Whereas this one, you almost get the benefit of milled uh, sights with the benefit of them actually being able to collapse. Uh, so we're going to put this into the upright ready to shoot position. I mean, there's the least littlest bit amount of wobble to them. But honestly, I, I feel like that's pretty precision. That's um, not going to accidentally collapse on me. So I'm liking that. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Looking at this rear sight, just like um, standard AR iron sights, be them folding or otherwise, it has a double dioptic. So on the rear sight, we're going to put you here on target, put you here. You can have the large opening, the large diameter hole, and this one again has the fiber optics on both sides. This is going to be for either night shooting, low light shooting, or snap shooting. So it's going to be less precise, but it's going to be faster. I can line up this circle with that sight faster than if I do the peep sight. This is a substantially smaller diameter hole. which is going to give me a much tighter sight picture, but it's going to take me longer to do it. And all I do is flip that over. So you have the one, two, three, three dot iron sight carryover that you'll have on most semi-automatic handguns. So you have your front one, two rear. So you still have a three dot sight picture combined with a peep sight sight picture with a long distance or more precise peep sight. Handy. The next thing I'm seeing is Ooh, all right, uh, microphone is here. So both of the, well, yeah, both of these. Both of the sights, the front and the rear, have a tactic, uh, tactical, sorry, tactile, my God, and audible click to making adjustments on the sights. Um, this one appears to be a wheel. So it sounds like it's a ball detent, spring-loaded ball detent, that will allow you to make adjustments without the required uh, sight adjustment tool, which is a tool that you would have to keep track of, try not to get lost in the grass, try to remember to keep it in your range bag, all these things, which um, I am not prone to do. So the fact that these are built in are actually pretty nice. So the way this would work, as you rotate this, you are either raising or lowering your front sight post. So you are adjusting for your elevation. With this one, as you rotate, you're going to be moving your um, dioptic sight either left or right. So you're adjusting for windage. So let's say that I'm aiming for here and my shots are hitting here. I can use this one to move my sight up and I can use this one to move my sight to the left. And now when I start firing, I've moved my sights to where the shot actually hits. And I'm able to uh, make the adjustments required to uh, compensate for different weight projectiles or different distances. Uh, typically, I do 50 yard zeros on my AR, stuff like that. So these are a toolless zero adjusts or sight adjustments, which is fantastic. Um, my other ones are not. And um, the fact that I noticed pretty quick that these were is indicative of the fact that having a sight adjustment tool is um, a giant pain in the ass. So that's pretty nifty. And then it actually has etched on there U for up and D for down. What you'll run into with the lack of instructions 
is one does not know if you are talking about sight up or point of impact up. The difference being if I move my sight up, I'm actually going to be lowering where I'm hitting versus if I'm moving my uh, shots on target up, then it, it it's backwards. So all I have to do is... Uh, Five, ten clicks one way, see if the uh, point of impact versus point of aim has deviated, and make my adjustments from there. Uh, my trick for the video, once you've confirmed your zeros, go ahead and use some white nail polish and paint a little bit on the adjustment wheel and on your site itself. So adjustment wheel and on the site. Uh, this one shows clockwise is right for what um, what good that does. And what you'll be able to tell is while I'm able to adjust this when I want to, it could adjust when I don't want to. If I'm crawling, if I put it in a case, if I put it in a backpack, what have you, and these accidentally start clicking themselves, my point of impact is going to be different than what I'm used to. So by having a piece of white paint on the wheel and lined up with, uh, let's say I put it at the noon position here. Then at a quick glance, I could tell if those two paint strips are lined up, my zero has not deviated. If my paint is sitting like this, I know that the wheel has rolled itself clockwise and I'll just back it up until the white paint uh, touches. So a quick, simple way to make sure that your adjustments are not walking themselves. So before we mount them, let's just look over them real quick. I'm not really seeing any tool marks, changes in uh, paint consistency. They very much like their um, company name being godly printed on the front, but um, that's fine. They, they made a, a, a good product, as I can tell so far. So honestly, I'm not seeing any tooling marks, which is indicative of low quality items. I'm not seeing any inconsistent coding applications, uh, you know, dark blotches here and lighter blotches there. I don't see any rust or anything like that. So I'm actually pretty impressed. Another thing I'm liking off the top is you have a front sight post and it's very thin, which is good for precision, right? If I'm trying to hit this target and I'm using my thumb, I I can make a gross uh, sight picture and assume that I'm hitting that target. But if I'm using something very thin, I have a more precise understanding of where those projectiles are gonna hit. It could be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. With the thumb, it's, um, you know, I I'm covering it. I'm sure I'll hit somewhere in here. I could be a little bit more precise with something a little more narrow. So this guy's nice and narrow. The downside to that is it's much more prone to damage. And what um, they decided to do, let's see. I mean, that's an eighth of an inch thick wings on the sides here. And there is... Uh, there is no bending or flexing or creasing, uh, creaking or anything like that on these guys. So not only have they designed a fairly precise set of actually metal sights, but um, they went ahead and made the wings very sturdy to protect them from banging or bouncing off the ground or, you know, being snagged and ripped out or something like that. So. A lot of pretty decent engineering for $30, I'd say. Um, let's see what else we have. So they will be laying on the upper like this. The shadows aren't really helping this point, but the way they angled these sights, um, it looks like they were aware that there is a, a chance that these could accidentally snag up against something. So they almost gave it a ramp angle, uh, a, a wedge kind of shape to it. So um, it looks pretty thick here, and it is, but if you look, um, come on, auxiliary lighting. 
it's actually about half the height because the well here, the missing portion here, is actually going to be on the rail. So it's not... <laughs> it's not the entirety of this face that can accidentally snag. It's only from here to here. So it's actually half is a uh, much frontal surface area as you would think. So actually relatively snag free design as well. Um, and we have of course the same on the rear and they're gonna be wedged as well. So that's about all I got for that. Um, did we look at, yeah, call it five eighths. Um, three quarters of an inch tall. Well, that's not true either, because again, uh, this much is actually going to be on your rail. So we're only looking at the height of this guy, and that's going to be just shy of half an inch. So man, while these aren't low profile and they're not advertised as being low profile, they're actually pretty low profile. So with all that said, let's go ahead and bust out the Loctite. We're going to go ahead and mount these on the upper and that should be about uh, the end of the video for this part. Another another tip for the video is a lot of times when you're looking at uh, Amazon or eBay, photographers aren't shooters. Well, <laughs> ironically there, uh, are not firearm shooters. Uh, they do know how to shoot people. Uh, you will sometimes see the sights lined up like this, or you'll have them set up like this, where technically this is the front sight and this is the rear sight, but the way they set these up is backwards. You don't want your sight pointing towards the muzzle because it's going to be more prone to snagging or getting dirt in it or something like that. You actually want them sitting like this. So you're going to want to be tightening them from the right side of your upper. Um, there is a photographer, I wanna say it was in the 80s, it was some gun rag magazine, and uh, Heckler and Koch had made a new uh, handgun or were presenting a new firearm for some kind of shot show or some such. And they provided the photographer a firearm, a magazine, and several rounds of ammunition. Well. Photographer didn't know, and um, cylindrical bullets fit into a magazine two different ways, as it turns out. Projectile pointing away from the shooter, which is the way it should be, loading into the chamber, into the barrel, and being fired towards uh, the target, or the opposite of that. So there is a very prominent magazine with a very high-priced uh, Heckler & Koch firearm, uh, thousands of dollars, handgun. And uh, the photographer had put the projectiles in the magazine backwards. So I guess there's a bit of a meme going around, a bit of a uh, piss take, that whenever people purchase a Heckler & Koch firearm, they will post it on social media and they will intentionally put the magazine or the... Uh, projectiles into the magazine backwards as kind of a callback to the fact that uh that happened once kind of funny anyways with all that said we're gonna go ahead and back this guy all the way out so this block kind of just falls off which i gotta say i'm not super fond of what i'm gonna do is take the lock tight you only need the least littlest amount. You may not be able to see, but I can. I'm just gonna keep squeezing the bottle until eventually, maybe possibly, does what it's supposed to as an applicator and applies an amount to that block, which it has not yet. So, we'll get our science paper towel, give it a good squeeze, a really good squeeze, and determine that it is blocked. 
Okay, well, I feel like I have opened this before, but possibly I did not. Okay, plan C. If in doubt, stab it until it comes out. That is a life mantra that has helped me through my life. Possibly it will help you through yours. Um, hey, how about that? So, all that aside, we're going to go ahead and apply a small amount. I'm just looking through the hole here, adding a little dot until I can see that the circle is no longer a full circle. I'll do the same. Mm, that one's not threaded. So I'm not going to do the same there. I'm going to do a little bit on the end here. Very sparing with this. It's not concrete. It's um, just a small amount. So I'm going to pass that through. Determine based on the geometry that it should be this way. I'm going to do uh, one rotation so it's still nice and loose. I'm going to put it on the furthermost Picatinny notch. Picatinny, by the way, refers to the standardization of the rail. Um, a 1911 Picatinny, I believe. So standardized in 1911 if the nomenclature is anything to go off of. I don't want to be super tight, but I am going to give it a little bit of torque. And here is our first one. So the rail is typically one, two, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, call it five eighths of an inch at its widest point. And uh, it is going to be a little bit wider. What I do like about it is the profile that block is actually less wide than the rail underneath it. So the rail will actually touch before that site does. So there should even be minimal bumping there. And if I put it this way, I have to roll that uh, upper pretty well before that site pops up. So I am liking that. Ooh, beautiful. So. I push this into release. As soon as I start camming that back, even like what, five, 10 degrees, click. Oh, look at that. Smart little buggers. So, I don't know. Eh, that should work pretty well. This is the wheel that you adjust the up and down uh, elevation of your front sight with. Look what they did. That wheel is proud. That wheel extends past the front sight. So you have a bit of a T action going here. This extension is milled at the correct distance where when you fold this, that wheel actually cams into the space in between the Picatinny rail, which allows it to sit more flush and shorter uh, to your rail, which is gonna make it less proud and less likely to snag. I am, man, for $30, my gosh, that is, that is very nice. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. Honestly, uh, I feel like I should pick up a few more of these. These are actually pretty nice. Um, I say all that without uh, firing a single shot, but that shall come at some point. At some point in time, baby boy will receive his allowance in either dollary dues or rounds of 22 long rifle, and he will have a happy childhood. Okay, so that is all we got. For the lock tight. 
Again, I'm going to leave this nice and sloppy. That's going to give me the best uh, chance. So um, how will I show that? I will show it like this. You can see the threads on the bolt that I just ran through, right? That is the lowest portion of this relatively otherwise flat uh, site. Okay, so this uh, bolt serves two functions. One, it will force the site to clamp into position. And second, it will act as your index into the rail. So I'm gonna line up this notch with that bolt. That bolt, just as the front sight adjustment wheel went into that notch, so too am I going to line up that cross bolt. I don't mean to pander to those of you who know, but I do want to educate those who do not. All right. So that's going to sit like that. I'm going to give that a good twist. And that is our installed site solution. All right. So um, off the bat, it is a little bit glossier than the upper, but you have two different manufacturers with two different finishes. Um, I believe the Palmetto State Armory would highly recommend. Upper is um, nitrided finish versus this seems more of a paint, but I guess we'll see as it starts chipping and peeling. But again, it's much easier to deploy these with Ooh, beautiful, just short enough. It, that is the cuckoo clock, everyone should have one. It is much easier to deploy these when they're mounted on the rail. Let me see if I can't get you to focus there. I can, ish. Thanks for showing me you can do it, you just choose not to. So anyways, uh, that is the cuckoo clock, everyone should have one. Being bioptic humans with two eyes, we have something called depth perception, which is something this camera does not. So um, that sight picture is actually very easy to pick up from where I'm standing. Again, these will not fold unless I push that button and for, man, I'm really liking that. That's nice. Um, the only thing I'm seeing is in order to charge the AR-15, um, there is a charging handle here. So you can see there's a little hook. You're going to compress that, which you'll do is you just pull back like this, and you will pull your bolt carrier group rearward enough to clear your ejection port and pick up a fresh cartridge. Under spring tension, this will be trying to push itself back forward, so you're gonna be fighting that spring tension uh, as you release it. So you're gonna slingshot, you're gonna pull it back and release. You're not gonna pull it back and baby it forward, like uh, firing a bow or, again, a slingshot. You're gonna pull back and release. This will slam forward, okay? All that to say, there is a bit of an issue where I have maybe two fingers clearance where, oh, well, I guess not just negated that. If I'm pulling this quickly, there's, man, they really thought this out. This is proud. You can see light in between it, but it's not proud enough where it's going to snag my finger and I'm going to assume that I'm pulling on the charging handle. So I don't need to worry about that. Should that bother you, you can always move this anywhere you want to on the rail. You could just go one more space up or two more spaces up. Um, but it looks like they engineered it enough where one, my fingers aren't gonna snag on it. And two, I'm not going to accidentally raise that up. And now I have something you know, uh, in my fingers that I physically cannot pull my hand back on. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. That is beautiful. Um, I mean, they aren't the lightest things. I feel like they do add a little bit of top heaviness, but um, 
that's what we got so far. Now we'll have to see if they hold zero. That was my incredibly exhaustive and um, thought-provoking uh, install on sites, but hey, you have no one to blame except yourself. You clicked on the video and you stuck around this long. And for that, I'm thankful. So any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below as always. Uh, I know it's been a while since I posted any kind of firearm related video. I'm hoping to uh, correct that injustice here shortly. We are finally at the point where I have to mow my yard again. So that's indicative that it might possibly not snow here in Ohio and I may be able to go outside and annoy the neighbors. So. Look forward to more videos here coming up since I have a new upper and new sites. The next step will be zeroing them, which is the process of, if I'm hitting here, telling my sites to line up with point of aim, adding up with the point of impact, and then confirming through several hundreds of rounds that these sites do not start losing their um, position and adjusting the zero. So gonna get a little bit of range time on this guy uh go through a process and um get this guy ready for shooting but until then again this is uh outside the target demographic i appreciate you guys' time as always and i will catch you in the next video